really be hard to say what was the biggest uh, advantage that we had, except that, that those of us uh, who have lived in the, here in this community for a long time uh, really appreciate what we had in Tampa Bay. Unfortunately, uh, so many people that came to see us uh, wanting to get involved in the convention from out of town uh, were amazed that Tampa Bay was as impressive as it is. And all of these things happened over a period of time. And we, uh, living here, uh, first we're very impressed with a new project or something that's happened. Uh, but we get used to it and we kind of take it for granted. But these newcomers, realize that we have something really special. So part of our goal in, in having this convention is developing an economic uh, development opportunity uh, for the whole Tampa Bay area and for the state of Florida. Uh, when you think about uh, 50 states, including Florida, a lot of people uh, hardly ever have been here. And you have decision makers and CEOs from all these different states and they see us uh, not as we see ourselves, but as an incredible area that they really didn't realize was this good. And it, it's the Tampa area, the St. Petersburg, and the Clearwater. It's all terrific. And uh, we want to share it with the world. And being in the world spotlight, uh, a lot of people, uh, I served on the Aviation Authority for 12 years. We have a new executive director, and he's interested in bringing international travel uh, to Tampa. And uh, this will help in, in showing people in these other countries where we're pursuing uh, opportunities for them to bring their uh, airline servers here, and then the people that live in those countries coming in and, and, and exploring our beaches and all the great access that we have. And so, yeah, in my estimation, and I think all the terrific people that work with us on this convention, our host committee, everyone, they were all team players together, and we have board of governors, and we have thousands of volunteers that have an opportunity uh, to experience something, the largest event ever held in the state of Florida, uh, the largest event in the country once every four years, and the world knows about Tampa Bay now, and I think that we're going to have long-term benefits for years to come. We'll see people coming here. We have a state that has a right to work law, no state income tax. This is a tremendous advantage for companies, particularly if they're up in the Northeast and experience this one that we didn't have. Uh, but they, they realize we have a great climate here. We had meteorologists tell us the three times we tried to go for the convention that hurricanes would not be a factor. And even though that one uh, up here, and they panicked a little bit, they pushed the convention back for one day. It didn't come to Tampa. So we're still better than 100 years since we've had a real storm like that. Uh, we have a lot to offer, and I think that uh, long term we're going to really benefit from this experience. I love how excited you get talking about it. Your, your eyes just glow. It's just really been a fabulous day for you. So glad to have you here and for advancing that. Uh, Dr. Clasco, we're going to go to you. Um, by the way, I don't think the mayor's wife raised your paper about not becoming an LDG. <laughs> she didn't leave the paper. Um, I won't uh, enumerate again um, some of the things that have, uh, that have had just happened, happened in the past couple of years. The, the Tamils, fabulous facility there, the relationship with the villages, the USF health system with Lakeland Region. You know, over the past seven years, the, this, this, uh, the medical community has just expanded. So much, and it's become such a big economic driver. So, can you tell us briefly the economic development strategy of all these individual pieces and how they came together? Yeah, I've actually tried to take a strategy that really defines my career's problem. There's been about 100 practicing physicians that uh, have gotten their master, master's in business award. About 96 went back to the venture capital world, Goldman Sachs. Only four of us went back and had medicine. So we try to look, and we talk all the time, we try to look at how can we bring those skills to our community, to our university. President Genshaft started out by saying, why not us? Why not USF? And USF is now an internationally recognized fastest growing research university in the nation. That's what we wanted to do with health. When I got here in 2004, it was hard to convince people that healthcare was going to change. I don't have to do that anymore. It's pretty, it's pretty clear healthcare is going to change. So we tried to take an entrepreneurial academic model. We said, what's going to be obvious 10 years from now? And let's do it today. It's going to be obvious that 10 years from now, we're not going to just be choosing doctors based on multiple choice tests 
and science GPA. So we're actually working with the airline industry and others to choose doctors based on emotional intelligence program called Select. It's going to be obvious 10 years from now that we're going to have to assess the technical and teamwork competence of, of physicians and nurses and them working together. So we said, let's do that today. It's going to be obvious that to create a accountable care organization with 90,000 seniors and have them actually be a partner in that with an insurance company and primary care docs and specialists. Why not do that here and take advantage of what exists in the villages? So what are some of the barriers that you see to healthcare becoming an economic driver in a big way? I think it's right behind the better together. The fact is people, people, other communities would give anything to have a Moffitt Cancer Center, to have Tampa General Hospital, to have USF Health, to have the great work that Baycare has done, to have all, all children's hospitals, to have the other hospital resources here. We need to create a Tampa Bay model around that. We're all still very fragmented. It's this is what USF Health did, this is what Baycare did, this is what Tampa General did, this is what Poppy Cancer Center did. Once we start to define what is Tampa Bay Health, people from around the world, around the country, will say, wow, sort of like what happened in Silicon Valley, you know, uh, when IT really had its birthday. We want people to say, 10 years from now, boy, that Tampa Bay really got it right. They took their assets, they added new companies, uh, um, new hospitals, new entities, and got it right. We think we can do it right here at Tampa Bay with what we have, and we think the companies from around the world will want to be part of it. Thanks to Al and Ken Jones, we had 67 countries, ambassadors coming to the campus. We've already had three leads from that. Thanks to the speaker and the legislature, the USF campus will be the first place in the country that has the state's cancer center, the state's Alzheimer's Institute, and, and hopefully the state's uh, heart and, and personalized medicine institute. That's bringing in a company called, uh, from, from San Diego that now wants to bring some new heart technologies here to Tampa Bay. Couldn't be more excited the fact that Tampa Bay, that um, healthcare is transforming, couldn't be more excited that we have the ingredients by which this work with own appetite. It's both the ingredients and putting them together. We've got the ingredients, we now have to put them together. Okay, thank you. Representative Weatherford, uh, you've been such an advocate for Moffitt Cancer Center uh, for the University of South Florida. So uh, what, what do you want to say about what makes this a great place for people who want to come and live and work in Well, I think everybody who's here, um, I think everybody who's here um, if you live in Florida, if you live in Tampa Bay, you know what's special about it. What our challenge is, is explain to people who don't live here what is so special about uh, this region. But, but I think my passion, I think I probably get a lot of credit. People gave me a lot of credit for uh, you know, slowing down what could have been a very detrimental situation to the USF last legislative session. Um, I got some credit for something that we did for Moffitt Cancer Center that allows them to expand what they do for the next 10 years and really double uh, their capacity. But the truth is, um, I'm not responsible for that. Uh, we have a delegation full of members who are in this room, uh, people who aren't in this room, that actually made it happen. And, and you know, my position as incoming speaker, sometimes I get to be the tip of the spear. Uh, but we had locally elected officials, from our wonderful mayor of the city of Tampa, to our county commissioners, to our state legislators, that all said, this is a priority. Protecting USF, making sure we're investing in Mountain Cancer Center, this is our priority for this session. And I gotta tell you, when USF was, I'll just say the word, was under attack last session, I have never seen the Tampa Bay community come together like they did. I thought it was a very special moment. And so all I want to do, very simply, is to take that and use it as our launch pad. Let's use that enthusiasm. Let's use that same vigor, that same sense of community, that same sense of someone in Pasco, cared about what happened in Tampa, someone in Pinellas cared about what happened in Tampa, someone in Tampa cared about what happened in those two communities. If we can continue to, to move like that, think in that manner, frankly, as a region, there's nothing we can accomplish. And my time in the legislature will be short, and you know, a couple of years later, there'll be somebody else I'll be handing the gavel to. Um, but we should take advantage of the fact that not just me, but we have a whole host of local and state officials that care about this community and are willing to step out there. And, um, I hope to be a part of that. And I'm very proud to stand next to two, two legends, I think, visionary men. And uh, with, with, with gentlemen like ourselves and men and women in this room, um, let's go make it happen. Let's not ask ourselves next year why we're having the same conversation. Uh, let's go do something significant, something real. We'll take that. Right. Thank you. Before we let Mr. Austin off the stage, I want to 
want to say, sir, that uh, the partnership is not the only organization that wanted to congratulate you for your efforts on the part of the Republican National Convention coming 